Okay, what is an easement? Well, an easement generally applies to real property, that is real estate, and it's a limited right uh, to use the property in a certain way. Now, it's not a full right of ownership, and it, it generally doesn't entail the ability to fully possess the property or to exclude others from possessing the property. It's simply a limited right to uh, use the property in the manner outlined in the easement. And most commonly, uh, an easement is simply the right to cross over or to, uh, to ingress or egress from land itself. So, so to enter or to exit from, from land. And, and a party could be granted an easement to drive their car across somebody's land to access uh, a waterway or, or their property on the other side of the land. Uh, so now there are several categories of easements and some um, methods by which easements arise that, that need to be understood. So to start with an express easement is simply a person expressly grants easement rights to another person. That is, they, they write it out in the form of an agreement and say, here, here's your rights to drive across this property, here's the rights to cross this property, to run cattle across this property, uh, to build a, a uh, dig a ditch, build a railroad, do whatever across this property, but you don't fully own the property. I still get to use the property or retain most of my ownership rights in the property to the extent my ownership rights don't infringe upon the, the limited rights that I'm granting to you. So that's a, 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 an express easement. Now, that easement could attach to the land and say, no matter what, this easement exists for for anybody who's going to use it or if you um, if it if you sell the land on the other side it goes with the land so it could attach to the land and always be there or it could be an easement in gross which means um, that it uh, belongs to the person uh, itself the, the individual uh, who is granted the right of easement holds that and may not be able to transfer it because it belongs to them. But it doesn't specifically attach to the land. If the land is sold, it may not go with it. it, it is the, so there's the easement of pertinent and the easement uh, in gross. Okay? And, uh, but there are several methods by which an easement might arise. So we talked about that you can expressly grant somebody an easement. Well, an easement may also arise by necessity. That is, uh, one party has uh, rights uh, has property interest on one side uh, and this property is blocking the interest to that the, to that property and there's no way to reasonably get to it without crossing this person's land well the government wouldn't let uh, the person who's blocked in their property to go unused because they simply can't access it so the the government might recognize um, an easement by necessity uh, or a natural easement, as they sometimes call it, that in order to efficiently gain access to and use and enjoy the property on the other side, it's necessary to grant an easement across this other person's property. And so that limited right goes to the person to cross the, cross the property and access their property. So again, that's when, um, out of necessity, an easement is recognized by the government. Okay, so that's a natural easement or easement by necessity. And then there can be an easement where uh, pursuant to adverse possession. Now, in a, pre in a separate video, we talk about adverse possession and what's required to continuously, openly, adversely, uh, ho hostilely, or actually notoriously and exclusively possess somebody else's property for uh, a statutory period of time and that can grant ownership rights in that property. Well the same thing applies with an easement. So if you specifically use somebody else's property in a certain way without their permission openly continuously for a statutory period, it's no, known by other people, uh, then if you meet all of those elements then you as well can acquire an ownership interest uh, to the extent of what you're using it for, and that would be acquiring an easement interest or easement right in that property. Now, the last thing I need to tell you is that sometimes an easement can be an affirmative right like that, and sometimes it can be a prohibition on other people. So, uh, say I own property and I, I sell half of the property to you, and I say, okay, but I'm keeping an easement myself that says, in no way, shape, or form can you ever use the property in a way um, that would 
detriment me and I can outline what outline what detriments me that is you can never dig the gravel out of the ground or you can never put an oil rig on your property or, or whatever so it's very similar in nature to a restrictive covenant but it's rights in me that I can enforce against you saying you cannot use your property in this way because that would in, that would infringe upon my easement rights and my easement rights are a limitation on how you can use your property so again there's the express easement the affirmative easement easement by prescription. It can be categorized as uh, an express easement um, through agreement of the parties. Uh, it can be engrossed or pertinent and uh, uh, again it can, uh, it can arise by any of those methods.